Hello and welcome to the South West London and St George's Recovery College Home Learning Service. My name is Kelvin Heron and I am one of the college's practitioner trainers. This is the last of three videos about the five ways to well-being, which were identified from research conducted by the New Economics Foundation, the NEF. It will explore the fourth and fifth of the five ways to well-being, which are connecting and giving. It includes information, research and exercises to help you to plan how to incorporate more of these activities into your everyday routine, thereby improving your well-being. The presentation objectives are for you to know the importance of connecting and giving to well-being, the well-being research which identified the benefits of these activities, planning to incorporate them into your regular routine, you may want to pause the video at this point to ensure that you have a pen and paper available in case you want to make any notes during it. By connecting to promote your well-being, the New Economics Foundation explained that it means to connect with the people around you, with family, friends, colleagues and neighbours, at home, work, school or in your local community. Think of these as the cornerstones of your life and invest time in developing them. Building these connections will support and enrich you every day. Wellbeing research reveals the potential benefits of connecting, which is that it promotes belonging. The evidence indicates that feeling close to and valued by other people is a fundamental human need and one that contributes to functioning well in society. The strength and quality of connection is key how close to, valued by and connected you feel is more important than the number of connections you may have. And in terms of isolation, people with few social contacts are more likely to develop mental health difficulties. The most significant difference between people with mental health problems and those without is social participation. Due to social distancing, connecting with other people at present will be more challenging than usual and many people will feel isolated, but it is still possible to connect more with others. For example, do you have any friends or family members you would like to connect with by phoning, emailing, texting, writing, or chatting online to? Do you have an elderly or physically disabled and isolated neighbor you could get some shopping for while keeping an appropriate distance? When you are out, Getting your daily exercise or meeting others in any context, could you smile and say good day to them? When shopping, could you talk to the people in your queue from a sensible distance or chat with the shop assistant or cashier? You may want to listen to and then pause this slide to write down a plan of how you might strengthen an existing connection or make a new one. How might the types of connections listed on the previous slide help you? given the current social distancing guidelines. You can ask yourself these simple but helpful questions. What would be your first step? To phone, email, text, write, chat online to? When will you take it? You might want to reflect on whether or not this connection has improved your well-being. That is, helped you gain a sense of feeling that you are valued and belong, part of the community, and less isolated and more confident. Could you build it into your regular routine and try out other opportunities for connecting to promote your well-being? We will now start looking at the fifth way to well-being, which is giving. By giving to promote your well-being, the New Economics Foundation explained that it means to do something nice for a friend or a stranger, thank someone, smile, volunteer your time, join a community group, look out as well as in, Seeing yourself and your happiness linked to the wider community can be incredibly rewarding and will create connections with the people around you. Wellbeing research identified the following potential benefits from giving, which are improved well-being, life satisfaction, a sense of purpose, community participation and self-worth and positive feelings. Wellbeing research shows that small things are important and can make a difference, such as smiling, paying a compliment, saying thank you, holding a door open, or giving way to other car drivers. 
However, giving for the sake of politeness or obligation won't have the same benefits to well-being as when the intention is to feel good and make the other person feel good. You might want to listen to and then pause the video and list all the giving opportunities you have in your everyday routine. Remember, small things can make a difference. It doesn't need to take a lot of time. Within the current social distancing guidelines, it may simply entail saying hello to someone, thanking them, giving a friend or family member a compliment, giving a donation to charity, volunteering to help an isolated or elderly neighbour. What opportunities do you have to give? We are not suggesting that you start with all of these. It's just a list to choose from. Next, we will ask you to pick one to start with. Choose one of your ideas from your list and ask yourself these simple but helpful questions to help you plan how you may do it. What is the first step you would take? When will you do it? Did it improve your well-being? And do you want to do it on a regular basis? We have now come to the end of this video and the series of videos on the five ways to well-being. We have covered a large amount of information in a short space of time, so you might want to watch the videos again to become more familiar with the information provided. If you have any questions or would like to discuss any of the video information on the phone with one of our trainers, don't hesitate to give us a call. The number is on the slide. We hope that you have found the free videos helpful. Please do watch our videos on other topics and attend our webinars. They can help you to improve your understanding and management of your mental health and improve your well-being.